up some barbecue for you. T-Roy's chilling in the backyard grilling, showing you that you can cook it too. Always with the beer or whiskey, but he cooks responsibly. Hey everybody, welcome to Two Boy Cooks. Appreciate you joining us. Quite a few of you guys out there have requested I do a chuck roast on my offset smoker. So yep, look behind me here. I got my Lone Star Grills 20 inch offset getting fired up. Got some pecan wood on it. Now I went up to my local HEB grocery store and I was gonna get just a regular chuck roast, but I noticed they had all natural chuck roast. You pay a little bit more for it, but man, the marbling is a little bit better and you get a little bit better flavor. So it's worth it in my opinion. If you can find all natural, go for it. But uh, four and a half pound natural chuck roast. You cook it the same way you do a brisket, all right? Just low and slow, keep the rub simple, salt, pepper, garlic kind of rub. And uh, it it's, turns out fabulous. You make some uh, pulled beef sandwiches out of it, or chop it, make some chopped beef sandwiches out of it. Heck, I may even cut it up, cube it up, and make me some uh, chili with it. That's good stuff. But uh, I know a lot of you can't afford the uh, full pack of brisket, so the next best option, in my opinion, is a chuck roast. I'm gonna show you cooking that baby up today. Should be a great cook. Y'all stick around. All right, here we go. There's my chuck roast right there. Four and a half pounds, all natural. See it right there? Gorgeous marbling in it. And four and a half pounds, that's a nice hunk of meat right there. Usually you have to get the butcher to cut it this, uh, this large. In fact, I did. The ones I found on the counter was, uh, you know, out on the shelves, was about three pounds, if that, maybe two and a half. So I had my butcher cut this one for me. Let's open it up. Check it out. Oh yeah, man. Fabuloso. That is one nice looking hunk of meat right there, folks. I'll tell you what. All right, now, we're gonna go on with a little bit of binder. Worcestershire, man, Worcestershire. And while I was getting my wood, my pecan wood from my local academy store, Academy of Sports and Outdoors, uh, I found this, Big Mo Quezon, man. He's got his rubs and sauces out, so I picked up some of his beef rub. Check that out. I tasted it a while ago. It tastes pretty doggone good. If I can get it open, there we go. Yeah, man, just uh, basically a salt, pepper, garlic type rub. So, we're going to go on with it. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing some... Uh, some some flakes of stuff in there, man. So it looks like maybe a little, uh, heck, I don't know. I'm guessing maybe some celery or something. I don't know. I see some green flakes in there, though. Maybe some parsley. I don't know. Give her a nice rub all the way around. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And we'll meet y'all right back. We'll fix and throw this baby on my Lone Star Grill. All right, I'm about done with this second side here. Now I wanted to mention, if you want to get a really nice smoke ring on your meat, Put it on your smoker cold. I just pulled this out of the fridge not 10 minutes ago. And um, also too, man, I'm seeing a bunch of garlic flakes and other stuff in this. This, this uh, rub smells fantastic. Let's see if I can taste a little bit of it. Ooh, yeah, boy. Nice salt, pepper, garlic, but it's got some other stuff in there. And I would actually read you what's in here, but I don't have my reading glasses on. It's pretty small print. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're gonna check it out man it's good stuff now i'm gonna let this uh sweat for about five ten minutes before we throw it on the smoker so we'll be right back when i throw it on all right my pit's up to about 250 actually about 260 right now that's fine i'll go ahead and throw this baby on i think i mentioned earlier but if i didn't i'm using pecan wood on this thing oh that is one gorgeous looking roast right there we're gonna throw it on this top rack in fact i'm gonna spin it around so that the thicker end is towards the firebox, but on this on this model of a uh, 20 inch Lone Star Grill, it doesn't really matter because you got even cooking all the way across. But usually you put the thicker portion, the heavier side on by the firebox, unless you got a reverse flow, you know. Anyway, we're going to let that baby cook. We'll meet y'all back here in a little bit of check on it. All right, it's time for me to add some wood. I want to show you what I've got. This is my firebox, my Lone Star Grills. All right, this is my wood burning over here with some coals going. I stuck this piece over here probably 30 minutes or so ago and it's just warmed up so all I'm going to do is roll this baby over here stack it up next to the other one and what I like to do is just to get the wood going really good just leaving like an inch crack or so 
on the uh, door. Again, the uh, vent down there is wide open as well. That's going to add a bunch of oxygen and help that wood combust. And uh, that should be all we need to do. Once it gets going good, then at that point I'm going to close the door all the way. And uh, we're still cooking, folks. Everything's looking really good. Let me back you out. Everything's looking real good. Oh, let me show you what I added. Hang on. All right, you see my temp's 225. The reason is because I added a butcher trimmed brisket for me over here. It's the flat. And also have some baby back ribs over there for carrying. And it's time for us to spritz this roast again. I'll tell you what, that chuck roast is looking fabuloso. Pull it out so y'all can check it out. Can y'all see that all right? Woo, doggy, that's looking good. That bark is about set there now. It's been, uh, let's see, about three, three and a half hours. She's beauty, isn't she? All right, we're going to put her back in. And I'm not doing the video on the lower rack here, so we're just concentrating on the chuck roast. So we'll let her keep cooking. We'll bring y'all back in a little bit. We've been on for four hours. Let's check on this chuck roast. See what she's looking like. Well, I'd say that looks really, really nice. Can y'all see that? Maybe I can zoom in a little bit for you. Yeah, there you go. How about that, folks? That looks pretty doggone good. What I'm going to do now is test the internal temp. Boy, that bark is setting real nice, folks. Got 155 right there. 160 right there. So it's pretty close. I don't want to poke a bunch of holes in it. But uh, tell you what I'm going to do. Bring you back up here. I'm going to put this in a foil pan. Cover it with some, uh, well, first of all, put it in a foil pan. Put some beef broth in there. We're going to braise this for a little bit. Let it finish cooking in the braise, braising liquid. That's going to make it really fall apart, man, for some pulled beef sandwiches. Or chopped beef if you'd rather go that way. Let me show you that. Hang on. All right, guys. Old T-Roy just had a blunder. I thought my camera was going, but apparently I was mistaken. Uh, basically, what I did, I put the chuck roast in this shallow aluminum pan right here, as you can see. And I put some uh, beef stock about a third of the way up. We're going to braise this. So again, I'm going to put this full back on here like I just had it on. Close it up tight. That way this uh, chuck roast is going to braise. And we're going to finish cooking it until it gets up like a brisket, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit in internal. So let me throw this on the pit. We'll make y'all back whenever it's getting close to being done. All right, we're at the six hour mark on this. And... I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but it should be getting pretty close. Watch that steam when it comes out, folks. And I'll burn you up. Vent it. There you go. Let that steam out. Cool. Oh, it's feels tender. Now I'm going to use my probe to probe and see how tender it is, not for the temperature. That's really nice. It still has a little bit of tug to it. Really nice, though. All right, I'm going to let it go about another half hour. And by the way, it's reading about 206. <clears throat> but I'm going to let that go for about another half hour or so, covered. And, uh, and then we're going to pull it out. In fact, I'm going to leave it uncovered. Let some of that bark form back up like I tell you all about all the time. I'm going to leave it in the pan, though. See you in a half hour, folks. Ooh, it smells good out here. Woo. All right, been another half hour. Ooh, yeah, that bark looking good right there, boy. I'm loving that. Looks like it's nice and tender too. Let's check it. Yep, it is. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That's that's what I'm looking for, man. All right, it's about 208, 29, 209, something like that. I'm going to pull this off, and we're going to uh, let it rest in the foil. I'm actually going to put some foil back on top again. Can y'all see me? There you go. That's a little better. Anyway, I'm going to let it rest in uh, covered in foil in this aluminum pan for at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And we'll check it here shortly and give it a little taste test. Y'all stay tuned. All right, it's getting dark on me, and I'm fixing to show y'all that uh, chuck roast over there. But I want to show you real quick. I took the chuck roast out and put it on a uh, cutting board, and I used the same pan that I was resting the chuck roast and that I cooked it on. I put the brisket uh, point that I had in here. We're going to... Let that cook a little bit with that same juice that was uh, in the chuck roast. I didn't change the juice out or anything. I just, anyway, just put the brisket in there. 
Y'all check out these ribs, man. These ribs are looking really good. I'm gonna do a separate video showing you cooking ribs on this Lone Star Grills, but man, y'all check that out. Let me get you a nice tight shot on that. Woo, doggy, don't that look good. Mm-mm, these are just about ready. Karen's gonna be loving these baby backs later on. So there you go, folks. All right, let's go ahead and check out that chuck roast. See how it, how it looks, how it cuts, how tender it is, how juicy it is. Stay tuned. All right, this chuck roast is rested for about an hour and a half. In fact, this piece, when I was picking it up out of the uh, aluminum pan, this piece fell off. Looks pretty doggone good to me. But I want to cut into it a little bit. Let's see what it looks like when I cut into it. Oh, yeah. Cuts like brisket. Let's see. Really nice smoke ring on there. You don't see that? Smoke ring all around it. Pull apart. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gonna make some really nice shredded bark right there. So I'm gonna take that piece right there. We're gonna try it out. <laughs> Alright guys. I just did a take where I was tasting that piece I showed you. And uh, it was really, really good. I decided to, let's do this again, man, because this is good stuff. See that nice bark on there? A nice mahogany, not mahogany, a uh, nice dark bark on there. Fabulous, man. Before you wrap, always make sure that your rub is set, that you, your bark is set. You do that by, I think I showed y'all this, but touch it. And uh, if nothing comes off on the, you know, your finger right there, your fingertip, it's set. You can, at that point, you can wrap it. This is absolutely amazing. I'm glad I left the foil off the last half hour or so while I was cooking. It helped crisp that bark back up a little bit. But excellent smoke ring, if y'all can see that. Bark is excellent. Let's give it a shot. Well, oh, falling apart, man. I'm telling you. God, that's, that's good stuff, man. That Moke Sun beef rub, thumbs up in my book. Super moist, very tender. Mm, mm hmm Nice, nice smoke flavor from that Lone Star Grill. Mmm. Take and shred this with some forks or something and pull it apart like you would a uh, pork butt. Make your pulled beef sandwich. Get you a cleaver, chop it up real fine, make your chopped beef sandwich with some barbecue sauce, some onion, pickle, barbecue sauce. Oh, I wish I could taste this. Oh, man. I love this. Mmm. 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 That's so good. If you hadn't tried smoking chuck roast, give it a shot. Very economical cut to buy. Cook it just like you would a brisket. Simple is better with the rub, too. Salt, pepper, garlic. Maybe a little onion powder or cayenne pepper, depending on what you want. That's fabulous, folks. I keep coming over here and looking at it. Wish y'all could see it. <laughs> anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this. My dogs are at my feet going nuts. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you did, give me some thumbs up. Hope you share the video. And when you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody.